Hi there. Uh, we now get to a very cool principle in physics, um, and that's the principle of momentum conservation. Okay, and in words, this is what the principle of momentum conservation is. It's that in a closed system, with that means a closed system means we don't have any other forces acting on it. I mean, in other words, a closed system with no external forces acting on it. That usually means we are ignoring friction. Okay, we are ignoring friction and uh, drag and things like that just for the moment. Okay, friction, drag, gravity. Okay, we are just looking at the net forces acting on a certain system. Okay, um, the total momentum just before a collision. Okay, so I have something happening. So let's imagine I have a truck. Okay, there's my truck. I've got this truck is driving along, okay, uh, or actually let's call it a bucky rather because I want to draw a truck and let's change colors to draw a truck, okay, let's go for an orange truck, okay, so then we have literally a truck there as well and we have that this Bucky is actually heading straight towards the truck and eventually when it gets to the truck it actually collides with the truck. So it gets to it and there's a big crash as I'm sure you can imagine. So there's my Bucky. It looks a bit different, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Um, colliding into the truck and after this collision, after it collided, it actually gets stuck. So what's going to happen? Well, I'm sure you can, ha you know intuitively, you just know probably it's happened to you before you've been in the situation where now both of these, let's say the truck used to be standing still, it wasn't moving. Now both of them are actually moving a little bit slower than the bucky originally, but both of them are moving. So what it's saying here is that the total momentum just before the collision, so the bucky had momentum, okay, it had a mass of the bucky multiplied by the velocity of that bucky and maybe the truck was standing still which means it, its momentum was zero but it still has a mass of the truck and the truck still had a velocity just a velocity of zero that's why its momentum is zero so the total momentum before okay is if I add up these two these two terms or these two uh, momentums. That will be the momentum total before. And according to this principle of ours, this total momentum just before the collision will equal the total, oh, I've gotten a T there, the total momentum just after the collision. Okay, so what's the momentum just after the collision? Well, after the collision, you notice, okay, well, now they, get, they got stuck together. Now it's one thing. So instead of having the mass of a bucky and the mass of a truck, we now have the mass of a bucky truck, if we can say that, a bucky truck, or just, just a unit thing, one thing. And this one thing um, that used to be two, but it's now one because of the collision, will have a velocity of its own. Okay, so let's call it the velocity of the bucky truck. Okay, and that's the total momentum after. So this is simply the total momentum after. Okay, now what, what I want to show you here is that often we would like to know, okay, what is this velocity that the two will have after the um, accident? And that, that means we'll be given the mass of the bucky, the initial velocity of the bucky, the mass of the truck, the initial velocity of the truck, whether it's standing still or not, okay, and then we'll know the mass of the bucky truck, okay, assuming no parts got lost in the process, that would just be the mass of the bucky plus the mass of the truck, okay, would give me the mass of the bucky truck, and then the only parameter that's not known is this one and therefore I have an equation like this the mass of the truck velocity of the truck is equal to the mass of the bucky truck times the velocity of the bucky truck 
Okay, so here, which is once again, let me show you, this is the total momentum before, and it's equal to the total momentum after. Okay, and we get a load of different scenarios that we can possibly imagine, but um, let's just divide it up into, into two types of scenarios that we can get. Okay, one scenario can be collisions. And the, the example we just looked at is an example of a collision. And in collisions, we can get two types. We can get a hit and stick. Okay. A hit and stick is then where the two objects collide. There might be many more objects, but we're going to stick to, to one-dimensional scenarios. In other words, either left or right. We're moving on a straight line up or down, something like that. That's that's one dimensional scenarios. Okay. And we're also going to stick to just two objects at this stage. So one dimensional scenario. Um, and a hit and stick would mean that my two objects, let's call it um, we have momentum of object A plus the momentum of object B will be equal to afterwards they get stuck together. So we will have a momentum of object a, B, okay, um, meaning that they got stuck together. Now, if we just write a formula for that, it would look like this. We have mass of A times velocity of A, that's obviously the momentum of A, plus um, mass of B times the velocity of B, okay, equals to the mass of A, B is usually mass of A plus the mass of B, okay, this would be the mass AB times the velocity of AB. Of course, now they're stuck together, so they one thing. So that's one um, type of collision that we get. Another type of collision that we might get is called a hit and bounce. Okay, I'm going to call it a hit and a bounce. That is where the two objects bounce off of each other. And again, we might have a scenario where it, if I have, for example, um, a billiard ball or a snooker ball, okay, and it hits it at one angle and it bounces off at another angle. That's a little bit more complicated example. We won't look at that um, in this lesson. Okay, what we will look at is again just it hitting it, okay, afterwards obviously these balls don't get stuck together so let's say there's different scenarios it could be that the, that the first ball um, that hit the second one might still be moving forward and the other one might be moving forward at a greater velocity or the first ball might be heading backwards okay it might be returning so let's do this okay okay that that might indicate that it's rolling okay or okay this scenario where, where the original ball is uh, rolling backwards and the ball it hits is rolling forwards. Okay, again here you can see they don't get stuck together. So what we have here is that our um, momentum before, the total momentum before, must be equal to the total momentum after. Okay, and what is the total momentum before? Well, it's the momentum of ball A plus the momentum of ball B. And again, ball B might um, be, be standing still, so he might have zero momentum, or he might be moving, okay, but that's equal to the momentum after, okay, uh, this is initial, initial, and that can be equal to the momentum, the final momentum of A plus the final momentum of B. Now, obviously, this is what happens after the two collided. Now, that is the second one that's called hit and bounce. Now here what we see is that the momentum that we have now, okay, um, the momentum of A before is the mass of ball A times the velocity of ball, sorry, ball A, plus the mass of ball B times the velocity of ball B. Now the mass is not really going to change. It's very seldom that you have a scenario where the mass actually changes, but the velocity is the one that's changing. So we have initial velocity for um, A and initial velocity for B. That must be equal and now we see that mass of um, 
a stays the same but velocity of a we now have a final velocity plus the mass of b times the velocity of b now has a final velocity and just one thing to note is that if we were traveling in one direction and in the next scenario we're traveling in a different direction then obviously velocity might be positive in this direction and in that direction it should be negative so just keep that in mind that opposite directions velocity is still a vector as is all of these um, things we're using except for mass okay all of the quantities we're measuring okay so finally we are having a look at explosions so we have collisions and then we have the two type of collisions now we're looking at explosions okay and um, we're only looking at one type of explosion and that would be where for example we have a cannon okay so let's say we have a cannon here that cannon is on a frictionless surface again we are looking at a closed system so we're not including friction in here and this cannon is standing still and that's the big difference between explosions is that the initial the total initial momentum is equal to zero okay it's not moving at all and then all of a sudden something happens an explosion or a spring grid gets released or something happens and afterwards we have momentum in different directions obviously in different directions because it cancels each other out okay so here we see that once we have that cannon fires okay so we have the cannon firing and then the ball or the cannonball is released okay it's traveling and what is happening if this thing was on a frictionless surface it itself will move backwards okay you can imagine you shooting a gun um, a big uh, rifle that thing uh, hits you back it shoots you back because of the immense um, uh, energy that is released okay so here we see the same thing happens the ball goes in one direction the cannon goes in another direction and what we notice here is that the total initial velocity uh, initial momentum must be equal to the total final momentum and in the final momentum we see that the cannon has a mass so mass of let's say mass of the cannon and the mass of the ball Okay, and we have a velocity for the cannon and we have a velocity for the ball. Okay, that will help if you actually just draw this whole thing. Before, just again notice this time we've got one thing. So we have a mass of the cannon and the ball, okay, which is just the mass of the cannon plus the mass of the ball. Okay, and then we have the velocity of the cannon and the ball. Okay, now I said before that the initial velocity in an explosion might be zero or it is actually zero but it might be that this is a moving um, tank a moving tank experiences the same thing um, but relatively the explosion uh, parts are not moving okay so what we notice here is that the initial velocity is mass of the cannon ball cannon and ball times the velocity of the cannon and ball is equal to the mass of the cannon and the velocity of the cannon plus the mass of the ball and the velocity of the ball and this here I just want to show you is actually just the reverse of this one okay it's the hit and stick this is just the opposite okay where what used to be the initial is now the final Okay, and I think um, in the next few videos we'll look at examples to make all of this much clearer. See you there.